Today I'm going to weld up this body for a blast furnace. I'm not going to use a hole in the ground anymore unless I have to. This will make it more portable. I won't have to wait for it to dry out. Weather conditions, like if I can get in a building with good ventilation, I can use it inside. A whole bunch of other options are available. Just an old uh, ball bearing pan. And uh, of course I got my lid figured out. The goal here is to weld up the inside of the lid, get it all ready so that it functions. Then I'm going to fill the bottom with the refractory and the lid. Of course, I'll let that cure. Then I'll put uh, concrete form in the middle of it and pack the sides probably at the end of next week. So with that, I'll, I'll get started welding here to fire up the machine. There it is welded up. I'll have to do some trimming, but it's ready. I can I can pack the <clears throat> it's ready for the refractory to be packed down there. You can raise it up and move it. I don't know how well you can see, of course there's an inside of the lid. I've got it braced to the center thing and then the hinge. Nothing too pretty in there. It just it's getting full of cement basically anyway. Inside here, so again, I don't know how well you can see. Oh. And here, there's of course the post for the hinge, and then there's the uh, air blast pipe that will lead to the center of the furnace so that I can get oxygen. Time to make the lining for the blast furnace. I have just regular play sand and fire clay. The mixture I'm going to use is uh, two part sand, one part clay. Okay, there's a view of the mortar mixed up. Again, two part sand, one part clay. It's supposed to look like stiff mortar, and then I'm going to pack it in the bottom of said furnace. Okay, I've got them both done. There's the lid, all packed full, screened it off. And there's the bottom of the furnace. And that hole in the middle, I'm going to drill a hole through the bottom. In case I break a crucible, then it all just drains out the bottom. I had to move into the basement because it's freezing outside and well, mixing up anything requiring water doesn't work so well. The refractory has been dried and then I put some wood in there's more wood in there now because I was just going to get rid of it, but I fired it for about three hours and baked everything and then it did form a few cracks. So I took some, some of the clay slip and uh, patched the cracks. So this is ready to go. 
I just need the weather to cooperate. It's about averaging minus 20 and <laughs> it's not real conducive to making this work at this time. I was going to paint it, but again, too cold really for paint. All I have to heat my garage here is a Nipco. So then I'm, I just haven't had time to do it yet. But as it is, it's set up to run charcoal. Put the lid back over it. And I just have to put a blower on the, the spout there. With charcoal, it should be able to melt copper and iron and brass, of course, aluminum. The trouble is, though, with the things like copper and iron, I have to add fuel to it a lot. And that kind of reduces the efficiency a little bit. So kind of the next plan I'm going to do with this is to uh, make a propane burner and then a waste oil burner. I have buckets of waste oil over there in the corner. And that should definitely make it easier to reach that temperature and keep that temperature because I won't constantly be adding fuel.